Hi everyone and welcome Will. Welcome Hi, back to our group. Thank so you. good to it's have you good back to see here you again. with us. Yeah. I'm glad you're back. Everyone loved our last conversation when you were here. And I'm so glad that I have you back in our group. Because today we're talking about turning your setbacks into advantage, which is a hot topic right now. <laughs> with the Mercury retrograde, the petrol shortage, <laughs> Brexit the pandemic this is a perfect hot topic right now that we would all love to hear about right well resilience is the is the order of the day we need these times are very strange and we all need to be resilient to get through them so hopefully i can share some of my of what what has worked for me and uh, people might might get some better, some use out of that. We certainly will. But before we start, guys, if you're watching live, let me know in the comments. Say hi. And if you haven't watched one of those interviews before, at the at the top of in the description of this video, there's a little link. Um, if you click it, you will allow Streamyard to show me your name. So you might want to click that link before we continue so I can see your name while you comment and ask questions and get involved. We love when you get involved. And if you're watching a replay, then just put hashtag replay in the comments and also feel free to ask questions as we walk about. But for those of you who don't know William, William is an amazing, amazing mindset coach. He's not just a mindset coach, he's an executive coach. He helps high achievers um, reduce stress reduce overwhelm and have fulfilling careers on purpose. And William, tell us who you are, a little bit about yourself, about your background and what you what wonderful gifts you bring to the world. Well, um, I guess I spent most of my career to date in, in the commercial world. I was a finance director in a company. Uh, I've been in the commercial world for 30 years and a couple of things happened along the way that kind of made me reassess my values, reassess my purpose. And now I find okay, myself that's kind of made me reassess Sorry. my values, reassess my purpose. Sorry, I just wanted to see the comment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So a couple of things made me reassess where I was going in my career and what, what I wanted to do with my life. And some people might call those setbacks. I call them, I call them opportunities. So a few opportunities arose that um, allowed me make a transition from from being a businessman, from, from being a finance director to being a, a life coach, a hypnotherapist. Um, uh, hopefully, motivational speaker, speaker, and. So really, my my goal now is is to change the world, one one step at a time, one person at a time, and one one insight and one mindset at a time. Do you know I got a whole fuzzy feeling listening to this, because having worked with you for a few months now, I think four or five months, I I know how much capability you have to achieve just that. You have so much capability to achieve all of this and more. The best I, fit person. I believe to do I've, I've, al I've already I've already changed the world in very small ways. But that's how you eat an elephant one one piece at a time. So um, the fact that that I've met you, you've met me, has changed the world for both of us. And yeah, love that. So I mean that that there's a perfect example of how do we change the world every single one conversation day, single. at a time. Absolutely, love that, love that. And I know that you've got a new mission and a new focus to help people really, you know, have a really fulfilling, wildly fulfilling career, but while also having wildly fulfilling family life, a happy family life, right? Without like, you no longer have to compromise the two. Well, one of my beliefs, Monica, and I know I've kind of spoken to you about this before, but one of my beliefs during my career in finance was 
that I either had a successful career or I had a successful family life, but I couldn't have both. And you can see the reason why I've changed my <laughs> my focus. My the reason is is hiding in the background there. Um, <laughs> Very cute reason. Absolutely. So I mean that's but that's basically it. that's the that's um, I. I felt as if I had to choose between a successful career and a, a successful family. And at the end of the day, family family for me won out every time. But I do believe, and I've come to believe, and I've come to witness and to see that the belief that we have to choose is simply that it's a belief, it's not real. It's something that possibly we've we've picked up as we were, as we were growing up in this Western society has probably educated us that we have to choose. It's not true. We don't. We can have it all. We have the resources within ourselves to, to have it all, to have the perfect career, to have the perfect family, and not to have to choose. So that's, that's my mission, is to help people have it all. And the it all is whatever, whatever, resonates with that person's values their their view of the world their view of life so so that's the mission and it's a great mission having it all it it, it feels so good it feels What's so expensive that? i wonder why it feels so unattainable to us but today we're talking about turning your setbacks into your advantage right and we often see failure and a setback as an end right absolutely why do we see failure and a setback as an end to a process as a defeat i think we see it in terms of disappointment and it's only a disappointment if that's the if that's the meaning we put on it if that's the words we use to describe it uh, I described, I mentioned earlier that the setbacks in my life, I've learned to see them as an opportunity. So changing the word changes the meaning. It changes, it changes our energy, it changes the emotions we feel about it. Our, our thoughts make our emotions. And if we change our thoughts, we have different emotions. So, so that setback, that becomes an opportunity. And in that opportunity, it's something to move towards rather than, than away from. So it's something we can learn from. It's something that can motivate us to, to move towards our vision and realizing that what's important is the, is the meaning we've put on the event yeah. and not the event itself. Exactly that meaning that we put on the event. So what is um what do you think is the best way to reframe the meanings that we have for the events that occur? Because a lot of the times we feel, oh, but of course it means this. Like how how what what's another way of seeing that? Like clearly this is bad, <laughs> this means this and this means that. Like that's probably what's going on through our heads when this happens. Right? Well, the one thing I, I say to myself is well i need to ask myself a question mm -hmm. and it's the questions that you ask about the events that happen that really change the meaning so the question in a setback for me is how does this impact on the vision i want to achieve does it change my vision does it change who i want to be in a month's time in six months time in a year's time and invariably, the answer to that is no. And then yeah. it, 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 it then loses impact. It doesn't change. It, it might change the, the path I have to take, but then that's a clarification, or it might change the how we saw things unfolding, but that's about adaptability. But if it doesn't change the vision, then it really doesn't change anything. We still want to be who we want to be, and we're still working towards that fabulous version of ourselves that we've that we're always striving for. 
Exactly. You talk often about the concept of becoming unfuckwittable, which I absolutely love. I've got to say, you know, I I am a sucker for, for, for profanity, so I I just love that. So <laughs> I think it's really cool, and I think it really describes that mindset of not letting anything or anyone fuck with you, <laughs> right? And that re- having that inner resilience to cope with whatever challenges come your way. So you, you, when you talk about being unfuckwittable and the four pillars of your resilience, what are they? Well, for me, the, the, there are probably a lot more than four pillars, but the, the four main things that have worked for me uh, throughout my career and life have firstly... Uh, vision setting a vision of what we want to achieve who we want to be what energy we want to bring to the world so that's there's two parts to this there's the setting the vision the future vision but there's also living living that vision in visualizing it and taking a moment either first thing in the morning or last thing at night to actually visualize what we want to become so mm-hmm. being it till you become it, become it it's, it's experiencing the reality. So if we vi- visualize who we want to be, we can then we can then get the emotional impact as if we have already achieved it. So that's already mm-hmm. a win for us, having that yeah. emotional effect. It's a... It's a bit like a, a lot of the uh, pillars kind of rely on get, gaining the emo- getting the emotional gain that Daddy. makes us feel so much happier and so much stronger, and um, bringing that uh, bring, bringing that gain, gain internalizing that and bring, and making it part of who we are, part of of what we do. That is such a powerful concept, isn't it? Being able to visualize that that vision of of whatever you want to achieve on, in every area of your life, and then be able to feel it, and then that bringing you closer to it in itself. And I've, I've been learning so much recently about the law of attraction, and coincidentally, the law of attraction kind of relies on this kind of idea of visualizing who we are of the success that we want to attract, visualizing it, being it, experiencing it. Mm-hmm. So it, uh, there are so many areas of the personal development world that kind of relate to this area. So it's, it's, it's fabulous and it's a, it's a fascinating area. Absolutely. So does NLP, right? Because if, you, if you're going to... Um you know your mindset and then the actions you take if you take them from that place of having achieved that rather than somebody who's still to achieve something you're going to act and carry yourself a different way right so it's like from both of those angles it it makes such a big difference so we've got a vision to become more resilient and what's the second pillar um the next one i have down as stoicism stoicism and for me that that basically means that um you work you you work on the things you control you control you ignore the things you don't you can't control and most importantly you know the difference Hmm. So there's a lot of things going on in the world around us that we really can't control. There are a lot of things going on in our companies. There are a lot of things going on with our colleagues that we can't control. But not being able to control it, I I have witnessed so many occasions where people worry so much about the things that they can't control or influence, and they just become stressed, anxious, angry, upset, and it can, in some cases, lead to burnout in simply focusing on things that you can't control. One of the things, one of the things that really resonates with me is um, we can't control what people think of us. Yeah. So to, somebody said to me once, um, "What other people think of me is none of my business." <laughs> yeah. That's and that's absolutely true. 
So in learning, in learning that, learning that their thought is something I can't control, that allows me to be more authentic. Daddy! I, I drop that sense, I drop that worry about what's this person thinking of me. So the fear of, of DMing people on Facebook, you would think would be gone, but <laughs> it's uh, Hi, going. How are you doing? What are you showing me there? It's a... Uh, I think it's scary <laughs> teacher. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. And I love playing with scary, scary yeah. teacher. I love Monica's how kids love teacher. this scary Mon thing. Monica's Mon 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 <laughs> a scary teacher, isn't she? I'm not. No. <laughs> Will you go? Maybe a little class? bit sometimes. I'll be in bed in 10 minutes. <laughs> no, it's only in the Okay. <laughs> we'll sit there quietly and we'll chat in a few minutes. You can learn a lot from this, Max. So he's an okay. absolute cutie, honestly. The cutest child ever. So, what were we saying? Oh, yeah, stoicism about... Stoicism. Letting, go, letting go of the things that we cannot control, uh, the things that are none of our business, the responsibilities that we take that, aren't, that don't belong to us. Um, and, oh, my God, we try to engineer so much. <laughs> control in our lives and in our work it's it's impossible to even sometimes distinguish what's within and what's not within our control when you've got all this god complex and we think we can do it all be it all be everywhere do everything all of the time we can impact people's brains and their perception of us right absolutely yeah yeah so for me that's um Learning to let go of control, learning to take responsibility for those things that we're responsible for, but let go of the things that we're not responsible for. Um, well, to me, it's a like it's the one outcome. Of the, it's one of the aspects of being unfuckwittable, but it really does. You really do then let go of people's opinions of you. You let go of the the anxiety, the fear. So there's so much that you that there's so much power in that. There is. I feel proud just listening to you about that. That is huge. That's a huge insight. Okay, so we've got a vision. We've got a stoicism. We stop controlling things um, that we can't control and focus what we can control. And what's the third step? The third Fed one for me. And this really, this third one is really for me where the superpower is, and that's in self compassion. Mm. So, compassion to other people is something that most of us can do, but when it comes right. to doing that for ourselves, it becomes so much more difficult because yeah. we are all our own worst critics. 100%. And for me, a, a major part of self-compassion is forgiveness. That we forgive ourselves for our mistakes. That doesn't mean we condone them or 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 look to repeat them. It just means that we we let go of the shame and blame, try to learn from them and try try to move on. So self-compassion and forgiveness are to me they're are two sides of the same kind, but they really are a superpower in how we in how we can be resilient, how we can pick ourselves up from 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 failures, for how we can turn those failures into opportunities. You can see like such a clear path of how that births an opportunity. When you've got that vision and you look at only those things that you can't control and then you've got that forgiveness and self-compassion to just move forward and find the opportunity in the learning within the setback that's how you turn into the advantage and it, it also and this is also an important part of it it's forgiving others when we believe that they have done us wrong so again, it's not it's not about forgetting or it's not about condoning. It's about letting go of the pain, the shame, learning, and letting that other get on with our lives so we can get on with our lives. 
Yeah. Because that, that resentment that we build up towards others only really impacts on ourselves. It's our resentment and it doesn't um it stops it stops us moving on. It doesn't the other person isn't impacted from it at all. Self-compassion is what I'm not good at yet, says Claudia in the comments. What is your best way to get better at that self-forgiveness, self-compassion, when we are not very good at it? A very, very simple question. Ask yourself, what would you say to your best friend who's described this situation in their life? So you're not going to, this is your best friend, it's somebody who you care about, it's somebody who you want to alleviate their pain, so you're going to say something supportive, so if you know what, you now know what to say, and you now have to say it to yourself. There we go. It sounds simple, but I know it's... I honestly it's, hope it's so much. It's not that right? simple to have the, having the composure, having the presence of mind to do that. Well, we all have all these voices in our heads, the Absolutely. criticizing voice, the voice that tries to help you pick pick yourself back up and make good choices. And we have to create that cheerleader voice as a third voice in our head who just cheers us on like we cheer our best friends on. Well, one of, one of the things I try to do is when I hear the, the critic coming in, I set up a dialogue with the critic. So it's a critic and a supporter. And the supporter, because the words he uses are so much more powerful and so much more compassionate and so much more loving, the supporter is going to win. And how, oh. how do I know the supporter will win? Because I'm deciding. Hey, hey, hey. That's the thing with our minds. We get to decide and make new choices. Absolutely. And create new beliefs. So these are the three. What's the fourth one? The fourth one for me, again, is so powerful and for me has been so, so effective. And I've gone, as I've described before, I've gone through some very dark days and very dark times. But the one thing that is always the first thing to get me, to get me on the path to, to recovery is gratitude. Mm. finding those things in our life, in our day that we have to be grateful for. And sometimes... Do you know, this is a, so simple but so powerful. Yeah. Because uh, how can you see, still see a setback if you're feeling gratitude? Like, it's impossible. It cancels each other out. Right? Well, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, particularly, like... If we've been fired from a job, for example, it's hard to find anything to be grateful for in that until you change your mindset. But if, if in finding the thing to be grateful for, we could be grateful for the... Opportunity to start a dream career that we've been postponing for years because of comfort. Absolutely. We could be... Okay grateful for the fact that we no longer have to deal with somebody who's draining our energy. Boom shakalaka. See um, how we've swiftly changed two setbacks into an advantage. Let's give him some more examples to really make it land it. Um, well, I mean, for, for me, there was the... Uh, Well, uh, um, what other examples can I give? Um, I can give you one. For example, yeah. if you get fired from your work, but you've always wanted to start a coaching business, well, now is the perfect time. But also, like, you're no longer um, location-based, bound. So, like, because you've been fired, it's a gift. You're no longer location-bound. So you can move to the country that you always wanted to, like Tiffany did. Perfect. Right? She's Absolutely just relocated perfect. to Mexico and now she's yeah. going to relocate to Colombia or Peru or both. And, you know, if she wasn't leave, well, she left the job rather than was, was fired. But if she was fired, for example, like that would have allowed her to do that. Where be before, maybe she wouldn't have the carriage. All I gotta do is get there. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of times it's not even a question of, of courage, it's a question of comfort. So the comfort habit has been broken and we're now faced with doing something that's maybe a little bit outside our comfort zone initially, but it becomes so natural and so it's the opportunity for growth is, is really, we don't see it that way at the time. But if we can, if we can, we, we do see it that way a little bit down the road. And if we can, if we, the earlier we see that, the, the more quickly we, we, we get, we get a move on. We, we turn the, the set back around. Absolutely. And let's put it back all together again. So with an ex strong example for our coaches all in this group, because there's so many coaches, lovely therapists and healers and um, consultants in this group. So what sort of main setbacks will you be able to experience in your circumstance right now? Let's think about it. Maybe a client said no to you or you've launched a product offer or, or something and it just didn't go to plan. Nobody raised their hand. Or you went live like we just went live and nobody watched. Oh, worse. Somebody watched and they commented something mean. Right? How do we turn this into advantage? Right? A client said no to you. You can, you've got now, you've got, you can make a vision of what you want this process to look like next time. You can have a vision of the change you're bringing to the world. And just because one client doesn't resonate. Remind yourself that, of your why. Yeah. Of the big, big so, picture. Just because the, the client doesn't resonate with that, but you're still changing the world. Your vision hasn't changed. You're impacting so many other people. Then you can look at what's within your control, your stoicism. Okay. What, is there anything that I could improve next time? Is there, or what, because I can't change their decision. That's what I can't control. But what can I control here? Maybe I can improve my approach or maybe I can be more, more I can listen more next time or prepare or better. Can... Like what I can't control is how they feel about it. And I can control how I feel about it. So if I feel, if I take it personally, I internalize it, I feel wounded by it, then that's something that's within my control. I can decide it. I can decide how I'm going to feel about that. So I'm not going to feel wounded by it. I'm going to feel that that's this client's decision. That's, that's absolutely fine with me. And excited for the opportunity that a new one, better fitted client will come along. Absolutely. And then I will give myself self-compassion and forgiveness that, you know, self-compassion that for the moment that I maybe, you know, reacted in a certain way or spent too much time beating I'm, myself I'm up about to, it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to gain anything by ruminating on that. I need to let it go. I need to free my energy to bring to the next client. And I, if there is something to learn from it, fine, I can learn it. But fundamentally, ah. I'm, it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to not to get, not to win every client. And it's okay to like remind yourself that it's nothing personal again, right? And then lastly, gratitude. Gratitude. So I'll be grateful yeah. for the opportunity of meeting someone new and discovering what works well, what doesn't. And if, like, if, if coaches starting out have no other clients, well, they can't say they're grateful for the clients, but they're certainly grateful for the no, because the no is, in, is a step towards the yes. The yes. Boom. Yes. And that's, guys, how you turn setbacks into advantage. Because now you're in a so much better position after you got that no, got that rejection. Because now you've learned self-compassion. Now you've learned what you can improve. Like you've let go of what you can't control. You've, you, you've made space for something better. 
and you're ready to take action on that big vision that you have, the why. And this most new understanding. importantly, you've got, the, you've got the confidence and the energy to take the next step to move us to move forward exactly with a fresh energy and fresh drive for it fueled by the good things not the bad things like desperation guilt and shit <laughs> instead you're fueled by self-compassion forgiveness your vision your purpose and gratitude how cool is that well these are things that have worked for me and I'm sure there are many other techniques that people use. And really the main thing is whatever works for the individual, whatever works for you. Um, but these are things that have worked for me and I've seen working so so fabulously for other people. So oh, William. People. I think this process is brilliant. This is a really, really, really good reminder. We should make a little um, acronym for it of turning setbacks into advantage i love it so william thank you so much for today how can people get in touch with you if they're struggling in their careers with you know maybe maybe their career there's lack of work-life balance or they don't feel like they they no longer fulfilled in their career they want a bit more meaning and purpose and but also they want to enjoy a great joyous calm family life at the same time uh, well, the easiest way to contact me is possibly through Facebook. Um, just DM me, find my profile on Facebook. Uh, you will find it through this group and send me a, a, a message. Or you can also go onto my website, phosphorusnirvana.com. And there's a, there's a link on my website to set up a, a calendar uh, invite so we can have a conversation or you simply just send me send me an email and we can we can I can, I'll get uh, I'll get in contact from you from there so it's as simple as that I'd love to I'd love to work with people I'd love to help change their worlds and uh, look forward to it yeah and guys if you don't know, you're not connected with William on LinkedIn then you totally should because he regularly each month organizes really great events for people um specifically to help them become more resilient release more stress and live a more abundant life in every way um, and shape possible so um connect with him on linkedin and follow him for for events that he puts out because they are pretty cool um yeah thank you so much for coming thank over you here william with your pleasure gorgeous to energy. You again lovely to lovely to link in with you again and um, i've definitely definitely needed well, this um, this lesson today uh, <laughs> after a couple of setbacks so this was really really helpful and I'm sure it, it benefits lots of people watching us Delighted. and be kind to yourself thank you so much Will and I'll see you here again soon guys if you have any questions to Will of course you can drop them in the comments below and he will get back to you And after this session thank you so much Will and see you next time Thank you, Monica. See you now. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.